Here is a brand new Trezor hardware wallet. This is what it looks like. The words say, welcome, please visit trezor.io slash start. You have your Trezor, you just ordered it, good job. Suite.trezor.io, and it's gonna ask you to download this desktop app. It's the Trezor Suite. So you download it. You're going to go to suite.trezor.io forward slash web forward slash bridge. Select your operating system again. Download the latest bridge. Once you've done that, go ahead and start up your treasure suite. My hologram was intact. Okay. And untampered with. So, so this is a security check. Make sure the hologram sticker that comes on the packaging was there and untampered with. Mine was on mine. I bought from the official shop or a trusted reseller. Don't buy your stuff off of eBay for half off because they're giving you a deal on it. Never use any free hardware wallet you get from some random person. Make sure package wasn't tampered with, like is there holes in the box, stuff like that. So hit set up treasure. I have my thing already attached to my computer. If you have sacrifice for Pulse Chain or Pulse X, this is for you guys. You're gonna have two of these hardware wallets. You're gonna use the first one to recover a wallet. Now this is for your MetaMask wallet, or if you have, a, if you have seed words for another browser-based wallet, like Coinbase wallet, this should work for that too. You hit recover wallet. MetaMask is only 12 words, so you're gonna pick 12. Never do the standard recovery. We're going to pick advanced recovery because standard recovery, you enter your word by word into the keyboard. What did we say about keyloggers? Never ever put your seed words into a computer or anything resembling a computer. Advanced recovery, spell out each word of your recovery seed using your Trezor device. Yes, advanced recovery. Recover from wallet seed. Confirm on Trezor. I don't know if it'll... There you go. Do you really want to recover the device? By continuing, you agree to the Trezor terms of service. Please enter the first word. Each one of these represents what's on the screen there. So upper left says M-O, like M through O, those letters. Then the second one is F dash g now you don't actually have to spell out the whole word like i said you only need the first four letters and then it knows which word it's going to be because none of these share the same first four letters and then there'd be two options it's only one option once you get to the fourth letter and then you select that on here then you go to the next word so you do four letters in a row it knows which word you pick the word what this does whenever you tr whenever you get through doing this what happens is you're actually you're taking your seed words and what's happening is i'm importing that into this hardware device, then it has the seed words inside, which are offline, just like how paper is offline. This is just a more functional version of a cold backup that allows you to interact with the blockchain on a regular basis. All right, so I just completed the recovery. I put in 12 words through the hardware wallet, not the keyboard, hit continue. You can set a pin, use a strong pin um, so that if someone physically gets access access of your Trezor and they have your seed words, well, if they don't have the pin, they can't get to uh, the transacting with anything on it either. So we're gonna hit set pin, confirm on Trezor. It gives you a little prompt. You just hit confirm or cancel. There's two buttons on it. And so I can just hit one, 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 one. Whereas normally on a keypad, one would be here, two would be here, three would be here. It's all jumbled up on the screen so that even if someone has screen capture software, they don't know what you pressed. Now it's still a really bad idea to pick all of one number because if there is screen capture software, they only have to try nine times and hit it four times and they can get into the Trezor if they had that information. But if you did like, that's why doing up to nine is really good because good luck doing whatever amount of permutations that is to figure out the order if you do different orders of numbers. Pin is set continue now you can actually store bitcoin in here with a private key you can also have ethereum at the alongside at the same time i do think there is some limitation like if you try and activate all of these and track all of them with different addresses i think there's only so much memory on here that it can do at once but if you're just on ethereum you can just even act disactivate deactivate bitcoin and just use ethereum and then you just scroll down and complete setup and you can name your trezor I name my, you can now you can name it K for K, or if you want to keep it more discreet, you could just, if you're the only person who's supposed to ever see this, you could name it something like 
I don't know, something funny for any would-be person who might see your hard hardware wallet screen. Access Suite is the next thing you'll do. You're going to access your standard wallet. Standard wallet, it's the first account under that private key, public key pair that you have from those seed words. And so that first account will be seen here and you can have hidden wallets, which are hidden accounts, like secondary accounts that you can have under the private key, public key pair, same seed words. And it's only accessible if someone has all your seed words and they have your passphrase. If they don't have your passphrase, even if they're a million miles away, they have your seed words. If they don't have your passphrase, which is an extra like 25th kind of word, you could call it, which can be up to 50 characters long, you could be like, I love roses and roses are red. That could be what you typed in. And if they don't type that in, they don't get access to that address that has whatever you sent to it. So even within one private key, you know how in before with MetaMask, if you just create an extra account, if they get the seed words to that, they get access to all your accounts instantly. There's no way to protect them with a the passphrase or anything like that. In a hardware wallet, you can. That's why you're able to store multiple separate sets of dollar values if you want, spread across multiple passphrases within the same hardware wallet so that you can only access them. And no hacker, even if they get the seed words, if you move everything to the hidden wallets, nobody even if they have your seed words, can access it without the passphrase on top. That's the extra Omega security you have with the hardware wallet. Wouldn't that make you feel way more calm and at peace of mind if you knew that even if your seed words got out, you can passphrase protect it? And so what you would do is you would store your metal imprinted seed words for that private key that's in the hardware wallet, you would store that somewhere separate from your passphrase. And then even if they find your hardware wallet, and they have your seed words, if they don't know where your passphrase is, they're not getting access to your funds. So yeah, we're just gonna say standard wallet. This is just zero value because it's the same address we have over here in MetaMask. All right, so let's check out our MetaMask main account. You can see the, you see this address, 0x76 and 561F. Now let's check the tre treasure suite. Go to receive ETH to check our address. It's 076, your show full address. We imported it correctly because look, it's 07 or 0x76561F. So we have access to the same thing. And now what we can do is we just turn this off, remove from Chrome. We're totally safe. We can now make a dummy wallet. So we're going to remove it. So we can actually delete this and not worry about having to input our seed words into MetaMask through a keyboard, risking losing all of our crypto. So we can remove that and I'm going to reinstall it by going to metamask.io slash download, install metamask for Chrome, add to Chrome. So now we're going to make our metamask wallet. Whenever you have your private key in your hardware device, then you can use any metamask like dummy account. You can make a fresh one, you could keep a regular one, doesn't really matter. You just create a new wallet. You would want to put probably a more realistic password on here, uh, but I would still put a good password on that. It doesn't super matter because if you're interacting with this address, nobody can actually move the coins without interacting with this Trezor that's connected to the computer at that time. Create, next, reveal, see how unsecure this is. Whenever you create it through the Trezor itself, it doesn't reveal it anywhere. Now, this is a new address. Doesn't really matter, but it's the account one. You see connect hardware wallet. You click connect hardware wallet. This will pop up. You hit Trezor, hit continue. If it's already connected, that's what will happen. Or you just connect to your hardware wallet. You just hit allow. Make sure it looks normal and there's not any weird stuff going on. Allow for once for the section. Export the public key. Now you get to this screen. A lot of people get questions. They're like, oh, what do I do? It's asking for a passphrase. I didn't set one, did I? Uh-oh, did I lose all my money? No. This is just to access your default account that is the account number one uh, attached to your private key that's in the device. And so that doesn't have a passphrase on it and never will. And so you can just hit enter. Now, if you had a passphrase at that last screen um, for a separate address and you wanted to access that one, you would then put in a passphrase there and you'd have access to that account, which has those funds. So you just hit unlock. And you see it's that other address. It's the 0x76 ending in 561F. 
and now that's what I'm connected to this address with. Well, you'll never send anything to this this account. This is just the default account that you have to you have to create it to interact with the front end that is MetaMask. But we're just using it as a dummy so that we can import our real addresses that we care about. And this is where we're going to send our money if we were to transact. Or if you have a passphrase address, you can send to that if you wanted to. You could send. You can always send to any address, but you can only access and spend them if you have the private key. Like if you're the real owner, who knows the seed words and you have the passphrase. So that's our connected hardware wallet right there. You can now do transaction using the MetaMask front end interface. All right, so we're in the Trezor suite device. You can also check your backup within the app if your backup would be successful to make sure your words are right. Um, before you start moving tons and tons of funds into it, make sure your backup and your words are correct. Like it would suck if you didn't check it till years later and then your backup wasn't working. So all you have to do is you input, if you click on it, check backup, select the number of words in your seed. I understand, enter all words in the correct order and it won't affect your device. So this won't actually like reset it or do anything. It's just checking if it would have worked. You can do 12 words and you always do advanced recovery. And all you do is you, you enter your pin, you know, cause we set up a pin earlier. Then you're also going to put in all your seed words and it'll tell you if it would have backed it up correctly. Once that's confirmed, then you know you have the right stuff. Then you imprint that stuff into metal, all your words, and then you're basically golden, your backup's good, and you can set up passphrases and send funds to those addresses and keep notes of that stuff. Do not forget your passphrases. There's, you know, don't screw yourself over here. So if you're looking at the dashboard and say you want to wipe the device, you don't want the private key in there anymore, you don't use that wallet anymore, you go here, upper right, you go to device, go down, Factory reset. Wipes the me device memory, erasing all information including the recovery seed and pin. Only perform a factory reset if you have the recovery seed in hand or there are no funds stored on the device. Oop, I understand this action deletes all data on the device. I understand that I have a backup of my recovery seed in order to remain, retain access to my funds. Factory reset. All the instructions on your Trezor. It will all be lost. Are you sure you want to wipe it? All right, so now you're at square one and you're about to set up your crypto vault so that you can rest assured that you are as safe as possible in the crypto sphere. You are now going to connect your Trezor and you're going to create your own brand new 24 word seed directly inside the Trezor. So it's never been online ever. Use Trezor here. Oh, begin setup. All right, so we're back to the recover wallet or create new wallet. If you have all liquid assets in crypto and you're not tied to any specific address, like if you have stuff that can all be moved to a new address if you wanted to, like there's the only thing holding you back is like, why would you do that? Well, here's a good reason why, because if you have exposed seed words from having just an installation of MetaMask and that's the seed words you wrote down, those 12, if that's your current security posture, you are at risk. So you're going to want to move all funds from all of those addresses associated with that MetaMask Send those to this new wallet, which you will hit create wallet, standard seed backup recovery your wallet using a single list. All right. Do you really want to create a new wallet? By continuing, you agree. Yes. We are creating our offline cold storage seed word, and we're going to create that backup right now. Create backup. Now make sure you read all this stuff. Check your backup in device settings before sending money to the wallet. Never take a photo or make a digital copy of the backup. This is just another word for your seed words, backup. Keep your backup secured and never share it with anyone. Begin back. Create backup. It will generate a list of words which you need to write down. This information is the most important part of securing your Trezor. It is the only offline backup of your Trezor and all wallets associated with it. Sounds pretty important. Take this seriously if you plan to use it. So now it says right on the screen. So you guys would never see this. I could do this all right now in video, set it up and you guys wouldn't see it. Whereas on the MetaMask version, it reveals all seed words in plain text on screen. You guys could instantly have access to that. You make this whole, it should be 24 words, and it's super, super secure. It was created offline. And then that's where you're gonna send all of your crypto assets to is the addresses that are inside of that hardware device. So let me go ahead and finish all this. Once you've written down all 24, it goes through and it double checks and it says, please check the seed. And so it'll go in the same order again. So the wallet backup is not complete. Just think of it as, it, that just means your seed words are now written down and it's created. Continue and set pin. 
you should always set a pin. Complete setup. Access suite. Uh, we don't have any passphrases set up, so we're just doing standard wallet. We're just going to look at the first address that it was generated from our 24 word seed we created. Sieve, this is our address. This is our super strong, secure wallet address. Whenever you're in the Trezor suite, you go up to the top left, add hidden wallet. Okay, this is, this is an advanced feature. Take this seriously. But this can protect you even if someone has your hardware wallet and your pin and your seed words. If they have all that, they still can't get to your money unless they have this, your passphrase. So you can have up to 50 characters and you set it up. You can make it one character, I think. You can have up, up to 50. So we're just going to make it 1111. It tells you kind of how bad that password is. So access hidden wallet. Next screen will show the passphrase. Use this passphrase. It says 1111 up there in the, in the corner. I just say, yep, that's the one I want to use. Checking balances. The hidden wallet is empty to make sure you are in the correct hidden wallet. So this is for people who maybe they thought they had money there and they doesn't want them to have a heart attack. It's like, maybe you put it in wrong because if it was 111, not 1111, then I would have gone to another address that this also creates and checks, a, checks the balances of. But if it's not the right passphrase, it'll go to a separate wallet. So these hidden wallets are actually still under the same seed words, except... On top of that, you need the passphrase to actually access these accounts within those seed words. So even if someone has your computer with the Trezor, with the PIN, with the seed words, they still can't access these hidden wallets unless they know this specific password, which with up to 50 characters, good luck getting it. So you're going to want to make this probably like a long-ish passphrase that only you would know and isn't like obvious. Don't make it like, oh, it's, I'm going to make it my Twitter bio. Like don't make it something super obvious that someone can guess. And so you put that in there. Um, I understand the passphrases cannot be retrieved unlike uh, everyday passwords. So yeah, there's no like support group where you can be like, hey, I watched my passphrase. Can you guys do it to me? No. And now this still isn't like foolproof security because if someone has a keylogger on your computer and they could they can check all logs, they could potentially have your passphrase too. So it doesn't mean just give out your seed words for a lull. It's at just extra security if you want even more peace of mind where it's like, wow, that's I just decreased my likelihood of getting hacked by another 100x. So like the chance of you ever losing anything is even smaller, even, even, even smaller. We're going to confirm passphrase. So we put it in again. It is a new address. It's not our account one address that has no passphrase. So if someone were to hack or steal my Trezor and they got my seed word somehow by like beating it out of me or something, and they got my pin, they would see my account one, but they wouldn't see my hidden wallet address without the passphrase. So standard wallet, which has no passphrase, they will see this one. This is the 0x16 one. And then in the upper left, you can switch between your hidden wallets. Now this one, if you wanted to send funds or of crypto to this one, it's even less likely anyone could get to it. Even if they had your seed words, they wouldn't be able to get to it without your passphrase. So if you want to be the ultimate, most secure, you send it to these hidden wallets with passphrases. You separate your passphrases from your metal imprinted seed words and you're freaking good to go. You're as secure as possible. Pair that with a VPN. I mean, I don't want to give anyone super over overwhelming confidence that they start being lackadaisical. You still have to introduce OPSEC, which is operational security, where you're not out there talking about how much money you have, making yourself a target. Security through obscurity, it's been called. If you're secretly a billionaire, that's better than being out in public being like, I'm a billionaire, guys. Oh, attack me, kidnap me, torture me. You don't want that. So don't talk about how much money you have. Don't tell people where you live or give too much information when it's not necessary, if you want to be as secure as possible.